questions, c'est bon pour toi. And that's rolling. OK, thank you. Hi, I'm Messa. So, um, how was the work on this project? When do you start to approach uh, this movie? Uh, I found the book with Jude Law eight years ago, um, and we thought then this had some real legs to it as a story. Um, it took sort of two years to get Harry on board, um, because a book will remain a book until it's adapted by someone brilliant. So, of course, <laughs> Um, it's only an idea until she comes on board. And with her, then it took another four years to really sort of form what that film was. And in her hands, it became the film it is today. Um, so that's how I came to the project, and, uh, and Tom came in the casting process, which was, I don't know, was that two years ago? A year and a half ago? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And about your character, what's the most uh, part that, that intrigues you about the psychology or...? It just felt very universal, to be honest. It felt like something I had been through, plus all my girlfriends. And it felt like an area that we hadn't, hadn't really been explored before um, or dramatized. Um, and it's for women in their mid-20s to mid-30s. It's quite familiar. It's sort of like the pressure to have a relationship and to get married and to have kids. Um, and you're sort of looking for that person who's going to do that for you. <laughs> And every relationship you come across, you, you, con you, know, you contemplate, is this the one that's going to be marriage and kids? And it might not, not be what you really need, actually. Um, so anyway, it just felt a really interesting and complex sort of female experience, and male experience, but certainly from a female lens that hadn't been told before. And what about you? Um, well, I found Kate's character fascinating when I read the script. Um, and, and, yeah and the fact Ruth was doing it and it was Harry was, was great. And, and then Blonde, in a way, is a cipher, both in the story and to Kate, and so you're filling in the gaps around that, and that's an interesting thing to do. And, uh, yeah, but it was, I, I guess it was the, the, the project as a whole that really appealed. What are the difficulties that you have found in doing this project, doing this movie? Even the period uh, Harry told me before it was, <laughs> we know. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, there was lots of different, I mean, it's just a process of, of creativity. It takes a long time mm -hmm. and it's, um, you know, you've got the usual things of schedules and all sorts and actually just getting the words on the page and creating something that looks like a film and sounds like a film and something you think people want to watch. The book was like a series of confessions in a way, like diary yeah. entries. So it's like, how do you make that into something uh, that's cinematic and that can tell a driving plot story forward and then of course once we got actually got down to filming then the pandemic hit, <laughs> which was another <laughs> problem uh, but we'd never finished this film um, but we did mm. and so and like I said the team behind it has been so passionate from the beginning that uh, you know it's been a joy to work with them and we got it done yeah mm. yep um, well yeah I mean it was I, you know you could sort of palpable how how much everyone had an appetite to get back to work after COVID because we'd, we'd only done about a week. Right? We'd only done eight days of shooting when yeah. we shut down for COVID. So we'd just started and everything was in the office. So we hadn't really done much with Tom. We'd done yeah. the hey, how long did you shoot totally? Six weeks. Oh, okay. Um, so you were just at the beginning? Literally the beginning. Yeah, it kind of worked out quite well because all that first week was just in the office and it's the kind of boring stuff. It's her like dreary life. Mm -hmm. uh, the kind of fun stuff with Tom hadn't started happening yet. So actually, coming back after COVID was quite good. It felt like a new energy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, it, it probably lent itself in the end. Although we had a baby on set, which was amazing mm -hmm. as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Having a suckling baby in the background. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it felt very sort of uh, nurturing and lovely and holistic in a way. Mm -hmm. yeah. You are also a producer in this movie, mm -hmm. so... Um, how do you manage also this double? Uh... Well, I was saying it's quite interesting because uh, the producing side of it really came in the early the development side with Harry. Mm -hmm. And that was just me and Harry really working out who this character is. Uh, on the day of filming, I didn't really, I let the other producers deal with the day to day problems on set or anything. And Harry held me in that moment, which was a vulnerability. And then back in the edit, uh, that's when I would start being a producer again, I suppose, and helping hold her in her most vulnerable moments. So it was, it was a really lovely dynamic, and mm -hmm. it worked really well. Okay. 
Um, which part do you enjoy the most doing? Uh, there is a scene or a moment that you enjoy the most. In this, in the, yeah. da the dance. It has to be ah, the dance. Okay. Only because I, you know, hadn't been able to dance for months for COVID. And I think there was such mm -hmm. a repress, you know, there was, and, and this film, yeah. there was such a kind of need to sort of explode. And for Kate herself, you know, it's like it's the ultimate form of expression of freedom and kind of her own self empowerment in that moment. And we had a little sort of room in Ramsgate, a bar in Ramsgate. Mm -hmm. uh, it was supposed to be Spain, you know, it looked like Spain. Yeah. And I just went, well, we played PJ Harvey and we played Paddy Smith on loop. <laughs> <laughs> and I just went wild on the dance floor. Right. For you, was the same moment or? Well, yeah, I mean, and we had a little dance earlier, didn't we? Oh, oh we did, yeah, and that I was fun. I remember that, that was, was great, that was like, we that were was like really spinning fun. around, spinning around. Dizzy that's, that's and that's great. Yeah, that was great yeah. too. So the dance scenes. About the location, do you like the, the set? Uh, yes. The it was. Um, you ended up staying there during COVID, but yeah, um, yeah but it was amazing. It was mm -hmm. actually a really, it's a really interesting place because, um, I mean, it's this beautiful seaside resort, but it has, it's got such a British quality, and it feels a, like it comes from a different era, actually. When you meet the people and the mm. environment and the surroundings, there's an element of the 1950s there, really. Yeah. You know, so there's like yeah, yeah. really quirky, uh, eccentric, very Another British. Another time, they are. Yeah. It feels a bit less mm -hmm. schizophrenic than somewhere like Margate, where there's kind of like, you know, so. Yeah. Very. It's well, that, yeah. And Ramsgate sort of feels like it's got more of a solid identity somewhere. Yeah. And, she wa and Harry wanted a coastal port. She wanted the idea that. I suppose escape was just a step away, you know, that this cave yeah. was trapped on an island. So it's the idea of that she, if she could just get across the water, maybe she'll mm. be free, you know? So yeah. it's like having it very close, but she's not looking at it. It was interesting in the shooting of it, we don't spend much time on the beach or yeah. out with the sea, you know, it's there. So it's mm -hmm. almost Kate's so locked into her own life that she's not actually mm. looking outwards. Outside, she's yeah. looking inwards, yeah. Mm -hmm. And about uh, working with Harry, I was... Uh, I loved it. You know, Harry and I, it was great because we'd push and pull each other and um, it nurture each other and hold each other. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like it was just organic. I was saying the process of acting it was strange because I'd worked so much with her talking over and over who this character is and working out what the script was. When it came to filming, it was sort of like I just had to be. Yeah. And that was... Uh, it was hard, but also really, really uh, liberating. Mm. And she encouraged that, but she does, she demands sort of truth. And if you're ever mm -hmm. doing too much, you know, she wants to strip it bare and make it simple all the time, isn't she? Mm. She's, um, so I loved working with her. Um, for you? Yeah, I mean, um, very intuitive. And yeah. some scenes we rehearsed multiple times and other times we did it, maybe sort of rough walk through once. And and that's something you just have to have a feel for, and, and she really does. Mm, she's also got, got great choreography. Like, she knows how to move a camera mm. and to how to place you and, you know, how to get the best out of that yep. moment. So she's, she's from a dance background, and it comes across in the movement of the camera and with her, you know, direction. Mm -hmm. And what are your next plans, your future works? Uh, yes. Um, I don't know. This finishes at the end of this, and I may do. There's a few. There's lots of things that could possibly happen next year. A play, a uh, few things I'm developing. I've got a few more development projects, but it's nice. I'm, I don't know. It's just lovely. You, on the other hand, I've got another week on a Sebastian Lelio film. Okay. The one yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. And should I take a picture with you? Yeah.